We want the slots to manage showing and hiding penguins themselves as needed, which means we need to give them some properties and methods of their own. The two things a slot needs to know are, am I currently visible to be whacked by the player, and have I already been hit? The former avoids players tapping on slots that are supposed to be invisible, the latter so that players can't whack a penguin more than once. To track this data, we're going to go into whackslot.swift and add two properties here. We'll say var is visible equals false and var is hit equals false. These two new properties. Now showing a penguin for the player's tap on will be handled by a new method called show. This will make the character slide upwards so it becomes visible. Then set is visible to be true and is hit to be false. The movement is going to be created by a new SK action called move by x y duration. This show method will also decide whether the penguin is good or bad, i.e. whether the player should hit it or not. This will be done using Swift's int.random method. One third of the time the penguin will be good, the rest of the time it will be bad. To make it clear to the player which is which, we have two different pictures, penguin good and penguin evil. We can change the image inside our penguin sprite by changing its texture property. This uses a new class called SK Texture, which is to SK Sprite Node sort of what UI Image is to UI Image View. It holds image data but isn't responsible for showing it. Changing the character node's texture like this is helpful because it means you don't have to keep adding and removing nodes. Instead, we can just change the texture to match what kind of penguin this is, then change the node name to match so we can do tap detection later on. However, all the above should only happen if a slot isn't already visible because it could cause havoc. So the very first thing the method needs to do is check whether is visible is true, and if so, exit. Enough talk, let's write the show method now. We'll write func show with some sort of hide time as a double. Inside there, if is visible is currently true, then return. Don't show again and again and again if we're currently visible. If we're still here, it means we're not currently visible, which is great. We're going to say to our character node, char node dot run sk action dot move, and we're a few options here. We want move by x y duration. Movement x will be zero. Don't move left and right. Movement y will be eighty. Move eighty points up the way, and duration naught point naught five seconds. So very very fast. Then we'll say is visible is true, because it's now visible on the screen, is hit, is false, hasn't been hit by a player yet, and then we'll decide whether it's a good penguin or a bad penguin. We'll say if int.random in zero through two is equal to zero, it'll be a good penguin. So a one in three chance. We'll say char node dot texture is equal to SK texture, image named, penguin, good. And its char node name will be char friend. That. Else, the other two times here, I'll copy paste this code. Char node oh, dot text not dot text dot texture uh, will be penguin evil, and the name will be char enemy. So this is a good penguin, one in three chance. It'll have the penguin good texture and the name char friend. The other two times out of three, it will have the penguin texture, penguin evil, and the name char enemy. This hide time thing is not useful right now. It'll be used shortly to avoid writing too much code. It'll become clear soon. Now this new show method is going to be triggered by the view controller on a recurring basis, managed by a property we're going to create called pop-up time. This will start at 0.85 which will create a new enemy a bit faster than once a second. But every time we create an enemy, we'll also decrease pop-up time so the game gets harder over time, because enemies are made faster and faster. First, the easy bit. Add a property to our, our game scene to store pop-up time. We'll say uh, var pop-up time is equal to 0.85, just a bit faster than once a second. To jumpstart the process, we need to call create enemy once when the game starts, then have create enemy call itself thereafter. Now clearly, we don't want to start creating enemies as soon as the game starts, because the player needs a few moments to orient themselves to the game to have a chance to succeed. 
So in did move to view, we're going to call a method called create enemy after a delay. We haven't written it yet, but that's okay. This requires some new grand central dispatch code, async after, which is used to schedule a closure to execute after the time has been reached. So let's start by writing the create enemy method. I'll find some space underneath create slot at and write func create enemy. This will decrease pop-up time by some amount. I'm going to say pop-up time star equals 0.991. Uh, you'll realize that pop-up time starts as 0.85 and multiplies by 0.991 each time. These are numbers I've found using trial and error. They work because uh, I've just tried them out and experimental. I found the value that works well for me. By all means, experiment yourself. What it means is every 0.85 seconds create an enemy and also decrease pop-up time slowly, multiplying by less than one. So it'll be 0.84 or 0.82 and 0.80 and down and down and down, uh, smoothly getting smaller and smaller. Next in create enemy, we have to try and pick a slot to choose from. Now, if you remember, we have this array of slots here called slots, an array of all our wax slots. So we can shuffle that up and pick one of them. So we'll say slots.shuffle and then slot zero, the first slot, we'll call it show method. For the high time, we'll use pop up time. So it'll show and hide at the right speed. We're also going to say sometimes show a second slot and sometimes a third and a fourth and even a fifth slot. So potentially multiple penguins can appear simultaneously. We'll say if int dot random in zero through 12 is greater than four, then slots one dot show with the high time being pop up time. I'll copy paste that a few times. Uh, we have int random in zero through 12 is greater than eight or 10 or 11. Then we'll do slot two, three, and four. So as you can see, picking a random number between zero and 12, there's a high chance it'll be greater than four. So it's very likely it'll show more than one slot at a time. There's a less than likely at, uh, chance of showing three slots at a time, even less likely of four, and very, very rarely five slots at the same time. But it means the game's always different as you play. Next, we want create enemy to call itself after a period of time. This needs to be some sort of random period so the game isn't too predictable. We can calculate that by saying, let the minimum delay be equal to pop-up time divided by 2.0 and the longest delay be pop-up time times two. So it could be between half pop-up time and twice pop-up time. So when it starts at 0.85, it could be 0.425 or twice that, 1.7 seconds. So that's the minimum and maximum delay. We can now get the actual delay by saying let delay equals double dot random in min delay through max delay. And finally, we can ask the method to call itself. We can say now after that delay of time, call yourself. And in GCD, we do that by saying dispatch queue dot main, the main thread dot async after. This takes a deadline parameter, when to run the code from. And this isn't just delay. We can't just say like from one second from now. It's an absolute time. We've got to say dot now, the current time, plus our delay. So that'll mean one second from now. The second parameter here is what to do when that timer triggers. Uh, and we're going to say uh, weak self in and we'll call self question mark dot create enemy, so which means create enemy calls itself. Now, because create enemy calls itself, all I have to do is call it once inside the did move to view method after a brief delay. So I'll take this code and move it up into did move to view. Here we go. After my slot creation code, I'll change delay to be one second. So it'll wait exactly one second after the game starts before creating the first enemy. And from then on, we haven't got to worry about it because create enemy will call itself again and again and again. 
Now before we're done, we need to upgrade the wax slot class to include a hide method. This is because if you run the code now, I'll give it a try, we should see the penguins appear nice and randomly, but they never actually go away. Let's find out. There we go. They're appearing, they're sliding in, which is great. Two at a time that time, two then, one that time, one that time. So you can see it varies how they display the penguins, but it's all sliding in. They never actually go away, which isn't ideal. Now we're already passing a hide time parameter to the show method. And we're gonna use that so the slots hide themselves after they've been visible for some sort of time. We could of course just make the slots hide after a fixed time, but that's no fun. We are using pop-up time to decide how fast they should disappear, which means the penguins will hide themselves more quickly over time. So first we'll go to waxlot.swift, then we'll add this method. We'll say func hide. If we are ready, not visible, then return. Because we're not visible, there's no point trying to hide ourselves. Otherwise, we'll say our character node should run a new action, which is an sk action dot move by again. We want move by x y duration. X is still zero. Y will be minus 80, move back down to the hole again. Duration 0 0.05 again. And is visible is false. We now know the penguin has been hidden. And that just undoes the results of show. The penguin moves back down the screen into its hole, then its is visible property set to false. Now we want to trigger this method automatically after a period of time. And through extensive testing, that is basically sitting around playing, I determined the optimal time to be 3.5 times pop-up time. That's just my estimate based on what I found trying it out. You by all means give it a play, see what you think. The point is, at the end of the show method, we're gonna add a call to hide, again using dispatchq.main.asyncafter. So we'll say dispatchq.main.asyncafter, deadline will be dot now, plus my little sum, which is hide time times 3.5, for the closure to run, we're going to say weak self in, and then inside there call self question mark dot hide. So the pen will hide itself after some time has elapsed. Go ahead and run the app now, because hopefully it's really starting to come together. The pen will just show themselves randomly, sometimes by themselves, sometimes in groups like the two there, and also after a period of time, boom, hide themselves too. The penguins sort of slide in and slide out again in groups of one or two or three, four, or even five at a time. There's three at a time. Uh, all animating in and out smoothly with SK actions. Of course, you can't hit these things, which means this game's more watch a penguin than whack a penguin. So let's fix that next.